Hello, welcome to the Nitpicks podcast. This is Lee. I'm the Nitpicks books graphic designer, do books and patterns, and I'm here with my friend Stacy. Hi, I'm Stacy. I'm the officially the content IP and outreach director. Mainly I work on the books and with other people outside of the company, I guess is the best way to describe it. Kind of a mishmash of things, kind of like all of our jobs, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do other things too. Yeah. What I do. yeah. <laughs> so how have you been? Uh, pretty good. Um, been a little bit busy the last couple of weeks. Haven't done a lot of knitting, but uh, I wore the socks that I finished the other day. That was fun to wear. Yeah. A new knit. Um, still working on that end for November sweater. Chugging along. Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, pretty much the same. I feel like I'm kind of doing a lot of like little projects and actually it's really embarrassing because I put I think Elena was talking about this too on maybe when she was on of how she puts um projects in little bags all in like to keep them safe which everyone does I suppose Mm -hmm. but mine have started to pile up and I have to keep (laughs) moving them because they're all by my my work from home desk and like I have not kidding like 10 bags there of half done projects and it's really embarrassing so and I keep finding more things to work on. Like, I've been working on, um, I'm doing a version, um, there's this, uh, it's an it's an older pattern, but it's the Rosendale Slouchy Hat by Alexis Winslow. Uh, mm-hmm. It's, I've always loved it. It's just like a nice textured slouchy hat. Um, I'm doing it in high desert sport. And it's, mm-hmm. of course, I like using high desert. So it was mm-hmm. perfect to try. And I just really, I don't know. I just keep wanting to make hats, even though I have so many of them but as you I know you do as well but yeah (laughs) yeah and then still kind of chugging along on my um deep winter coat that I mentioned like several times maybe I'll finish it in time to wear sometime before it gets warm who knows this year it just seems like it's just staying cold forever so maybe I will wear it in the middle of (laughs) April or something yeah, let's sure. let's hope not. <laughs> I mean, usually there's there's days when you can wear a winter coat through even June. A lot of years, so yeah. June it's, gloom. It's always that uh, you know the day of sun, a day of gloom, back and forth kind of. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm not I'm not too stressed about the sweater. I'll get it done. I'll wear it. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, and then I just keep planning new projects because that's how I am. I get like really excited mm-hmm. about something, and I've been really wanting to like like cast on for new stuff there's this um in unparalleled i've been loving it for so long it's the ventisca slipover it's in twill it's by Kristen jenkuk who's one of my favorite designers i knit a lot of her patterns and i'm always happy mm. to work with her in the collection but um and i just have all this twill and i really want to use it because i use it for hats and stuff and i don't want to use it on a full sweater because it's going to be way too heavy but this little like vest thing just looks absolutely perfect. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, that's always been one of my favorite designs from that collection too. I I would love to see yours. I kind of want to knit that myself, but there's uh, I have way too many things going on right now. But yeah, that doesn't seem to stop it, me. <laughs> yeah, I also imagine it looking really great in like high desert, like a woolly. Like it obviously Ooh. looks great in twill, but um, I might that that might be in my two knit someday list as well it's a great one i don't think i've ever knit any of her patterns i oh really too i have i own a few of them I, yeah I yeah i knit too. yes i knit several of her patterns so nice. um if you want to check her out you can see all of her patterns not just the ones on our site but on ravelry she has like amazing patterns so um mm-hmm. I really love her sweater pattern. So anyway, but yeah, that is not what I'm working on, but maybe working on uh, (laughs) sometime soon. I don't know. We'll see if I actually finish one of my other millions of projects. So, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Just kind of like, it's been just kind of a weird couple of weeks. I think the time change kind of messed us up and like, just it it seemed more (laughs) intense than most years. (laughs) Like, yeah, I still I still feel like I haven't really. I know, and it's been like a couple normal. of weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. I'm just gonna blame everything on that because <laughs> it's easy. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we recently haven't got to talk about some of the great stuff that we have released. Um, we have a brand new book and some new yarns and new colors. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. So our new book is Pop Socks. 
Pop socks. I love this collection. This was so much, so much fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I remember when I was trying to like conceptualize what we should do for a sock book because we, uh, if people have frequented our site for the last few years, we usually put at least one sock book out, and they always are really popular. Um, I mean, I and of course I'm always going to be like, let's put more sock patterns out because they're fun. But I wanted something different, so um, I came across this image and I'm like, you know what? Let's do a really fun, super poppy, colorful multicolored sock book. So, mm-hmm. and that's what we did. And I, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and, and what sets this book apart from like our uh, last year's collection, it's they're all multicolored, but they're all multi-solid colors. Yep. So there, there's no actual multi or variegated yarns. They're all solid or tonal yarns, but multiple of them. <laughs> so most yeah. of them have like contrasting heel, toe, cuff, and a lot of them have like color work patterns or slip stitch patterns. Um, yeah, just all different ways to play with multiple yarns. So it's good for like sash busting too. A lot of them are like if you knit like kind of smaller socks and you have leftovers of your sock yarns, you might be able mm-hmm. to use the leftovers, uh, especially like for the heels and toes. And um yeah, it's it's really fun. It I think it stands apart um, from our other multicolored sock books. Oh, definitely. Yeah. See, I meant to say all of that. I just got really excited <laughs> about my about well, the colors. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really excited about the graphic design. We took your vision for the photo shoot, <laughs> and then I took those photos, and I made a more uh, kind of poppy graphic design style mm-hmm. with a lot of like circles, and that was kind of because pop socks has the the. O's and when I did a logo that has circular O's so I did a lot of like <laughs> circle uh, photos all throughout the book and had a lot of fun with uh, overlapping circles and anyway it's, it's nerdy but uh, I had a lot of fun with the graphic design <laughs> playing yeah, with those and we, photos and we had a lot of fun at the photo shoot we kind of went like with some different looks like we we shot it all in, actually at our office in our um, photo studio at the office and we had a problem with um, our model which she didn't show up. So it wasn't her fault. We worked it all out, but we were stuck. We needed to do the photo shoot. So luckily we live in an office with a lot of really great people. <laughs> and Ad- Madison from the Connecting Threads team Kate w- came in clutch for us. So, And you know what? I don't know what it would have looked like if it had gone as planned, but I'm really happy it went out yeah. it because I think... She was an amazing model and like fit the vibe of the book. Perfectly. Totally. I, like I wouldn't want it any other way. I love it how it turned out. <laughs> yeah. No, she's totally like she's she just definitely has like she loves like a vintagey type look and that's what mm-hmm. she wears to and she does look great. So it was perfect yeah. for what I had in mind. So, so it was it was super fun. We had a lot of fun. So mm-hmm. but yeah, and there's a lot of patterns I really love in it. Um okay. There's a pattern by Allison Griffith called the Rainbow Socks, which we designed yeah. an entire little mini pack around. So mm-hmm. you don't have to buy all of the colors that of the rainbow, like full balls of it. If you just want to knit these socks, you can buy our brand new stroll mini pack with seven colors. It's the first time mm-hmm. we got to do seven colors, so... Yeah. Yeah. And we, we saw this come in in the submission call, these <laughs> rainbow socks, and we were all like, okay, we have to do the rainbow socks. They're amazing. We love them. Um, we should probably design a mini pack to go with them. Yeah. So it, the, the whole idea like came out of the sock submission call. Yeah. Like We got that. We are like, okay, this is what has to happen. Yeah, nope. it all worked out so well. <laughs> no, it is totally true. I was going back and forth with Alexis, our director, and I'm like, we need to do a mini pack of this. Can we do? Are we able to do more colors in it? And then she's like, Yeah, let's do that. So, and then just a little sneak peek. And these are stroll mini packs, um, and we've got some new ones coming out. We put it, we released another one along with the rainbow called Clown Car, which. That was a really fun one to do too. It's kind of a really neon-y brain rainbow one you describe this. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> and uh the the clown car is a stroll tonal mini pack. They're all tonals. Yep. And I think in the past all the all the stroll mini packs we've had have always been tonal. Mm-hmm. But the rainbow mini pack we just released was kind of the first one where we branched away from the tonal. So those are all solid. So it's a solid rainbow, classic, mm-hmm. you know classic rainbow um and then we have some coming in the future that i'm really excited about because we branched even further away from the tonal and uh 
I don't know if I'm allowed to spoil this, but there's going to be some tweeds in the mix, some tweed mini packs. That, that's going to be uh, a few months away, I think, but I'm very excited about those. I love a tweed. <laughs> that was a really, I will say, that was a really fun color selection meeting. Uh, we were putting together the wildest combinations, and they look so good. You know I'm what? I wasn't very... there for that meeting. Oh, you weren't? I, I just, I kind of saw all the colors after the fact. Um, I would have loved to have been there. That sounds so oh, fun. <laughs> I actually, oh, actually, oh, I told, you know what? Because some of the color selections were so you, I just assumed you were there. But, all right. I don't think well, so. I've had, unless I just like no. spaced it out of my memory. Um, Yeah. Well, I love what you all came up with because okay. I, I was the one who did the, the labels. I designed all the yarn labels. So I looked at all the colors, you know, after they were planned out. And I was like, ooh, 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 I love these. Yeah. So excited about these. Yeah. But yeah, so there were some other really fun patterns as well in pop socks. Um, a couple of them I wanted to call out because I actually knit little swatches. You'll see them um, in the catalog. You might notice in the catalog that there's some different swatches for Falling Leaves by Petite Knitter, the Petite Knitter, um, in an in one of the new stroll colors. Um, it's really fun. I love color work. I love this pattern. I love the designer. So it's, um, I think people would really enjoy, um, looking at that. And then there's also the wavy stripe socks by Jennifer. Um, hopefully I'm not butchering her name. I think it's Belu. Um, Belu. Belu. Um, I'm so sorry, Jennifer. Your pattern (laughs) is great. Um, and I love the pattern. uh she actually, that is Jennifer, uh, sent in a bunch of process photos, which yeah. we put in the book because they were super helpful. So that one actually has some kind of photo tutorial element to it that we don't often have in our patterns. So that's great for uh, beginner sock. Well, it's the reason they're included is because it's kind of a, um unusual way to make the heel. So she sent the photo help to, to help you along the way. Yeah, Pretty it's awesome. really fun. I love I love playing with colors on that one. She sent in some great mm-hmm. um, on her original submission. She had some great color combos, and actually, I think the the one we went with is very similar. The original the colors in the book, I think, is very similar to one that she actually submitted. So thanks, Jennifer. Those were very helpful. Um, <laughs> but I did one in like the new colors: um, key lime, candy pink, and blue steel, and that was really fun too. Mm-hmm. Again, just fun. playing with a little bit different colors. So. Those yeah. you'll if you get the if you get the catalog you'll see my handiwork. So, do you have any other favorites? Yeah, I have a couple. Um, you know, my eyes are always drawn to those zigzag socks because they're oh, yeah. so flipping fun. They are knit sideways with the zigzag, you know, increase decrease stitch pattern. So the zigzag goes all up and down your feet, and it's knit the the whole thing is knit sideways with short row shaping to create the heel. Um, they're just so fun. Uh, so I I kind of want to knit those someday, even though they are actually fingering weight yarn held single, which I d- have never knit socks uh, in actual sock <laughs> yarn. But you know what is not fingering weight yarn mm-hmm. is the Comfort DK socks, which has DK right there in the name because they're knit in DK. That one I am planning on making soon. That's going to be the next socks I cast on. And they are knit in DK weight. Uh, what, what yarn? Is it Swish? Swish? DK? It's Swish. Swish, we have like- Swish DK, yeah. But I yeah, might a- do um I might do sock yarn held double. I think I feel like uh stroll held double I could get a DK gauge on that. So that might be I think I so. Do. Yeah. Yeah, we did a we did a few of them in Swish DK actually. There's a couple of patterns in yeah. Swish DK. And it was you know, I know knitting with 100% wool is not everyone's thing and also these are not ones that you're going to want to do a lot of hard wear on mm-hmm. because it doesn't have that nylon but you can always get a nylon thread to hold along with it we've yeah, had yeah. them on the site before I don't think we have it currently but um, those are always great to put on the heel and toe but they're also yeah. really good like just like you know lounging socks or like mm-hmm. or sleeping socks a lot of people sleep in their socks which I don't, but I know people do. So <laughs> um, I think those are good for like especially yeah. really cold nights and stuff. Or you can do what I plan on doing and try to get gauge with sock iron held double and then you're getting Perfect. that nylon content, you know, if, if you're able to get the gauge. But the Comfort DK socks, just to go back to that, they're these really cool modular um, striped bottom, like the the bottom of the foot is striped and it's knit flat and with the heel and the toe. And then you go up the top of the foot and you pick up stitches as you go. So the top is solid. Yep. It will link in the show notes, obviously, but um, it's really cool. Modular sock. Love it. Interesting construction. It looks um, 
quick to knit because you're kind of knitting like half and then the other half. So it looks like it'll go really fast. Um, besides being DK, obviously it makes it go faster. Uh, yeah. And then there's some other interesting construction too. I just want to shout out the other, cause there, this, this collection is so, um, has so much going on. The No Pearl Socks by our favorite Holly Yo, of course. <laughs> yep. which they're, call, they're called No Pearl Socks because there's no pearling. So they have these cool garter stitch short row heels. So you're like, and then a sideways garter stitch uh, cuff. So it's whenever you're flat, it's garter stitch. And whenever you're in the round, it's stockinette stitch. So whichever you're doing, you're always all knit which is cool. Yeah. And then, um, but it's a great uh, leftover stash buster because the cuff and the heel and the toe are all different colors. And then the, the body is another color. So Holly coming up with new ways to put, <laughs> to do socks. <laughs> yeah. And then, Ooh, the rebound socks are cool because they're a two color, like, I think it's a slip stitch color work, but they're uh fraternal <laughs> pair. Yeah. So they're, so main color contrasting color are flipped on the right and the left sock, which means that you can maximize your yardage and use up, you know, two skeins only um, for both socks because you're using more of one on the one sock and more of the other one on the other sock. And then they look cool. Um, that one's also in Switch DK. So that's another uh, one of our Switch, D- Switch DK ones. forgot about that. So. Yep. Yeah, I love I love that one. Yeah, uh, it's such a fun. We just want, we probably shouldn't talk the entire time yeah, about that, this collection, I'll, I'll but we're very excited. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I barely like I, I barely like I kind of skipped over falling leaves, but that is still one of my favorite patterns in the book. I really it's like kind of a more traditional fair isle, not fair isle, but color work sock. Mm, so stranded. it is a sl- yeah. stranded. Um, but I had a lot of fun knitting that. And I did that one in a solid rather than a tweed because I know some people don't like knitting with tweed. So we did this one in a solid um, in frost and in poppy, which is the new uh, stroll color. And it seemed to fit the falling leaves, fallen leaves um, theme more. And I don't know. I just really liked it. And I think I might finish that swatch because, so I can have my own pair of socks because <laughs> I really like that that pattern. So And that's by the nice. Petite Knitter. So you know Mm -hmm. it's going to be a good one so yeah so other stuff we have on this new stuff we have on the site we have animation they're they're so cute they're (laughs) little they're 10 packs of little mini skeins of 25 grams each um they're made they're intended to be used for amigurumi or any little toys where you only need a small amount of color because it's in mercerized cotton um, which is nice to knit with. It just it it holds up really well for little toys. So, mm-hmm. and what's one of the things I've been working on? I waited to talk about it now because I am knitting um, this pattern that's on the site called Woodland Friends. Well, I'm not knitting all of them. I'm knitting one of them. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, one of the little fox. It's by Jessica Zaz. She has another cute uh, Arctic Friends one that's really cute too. But I think it's perfect for that. Co- like pattern um, because there's a lot of different colors, but they only use a small amount of each. But uh, yeah, cute. they're super cute. I love little mini skeins. They're a big hit around the office. We have a lot of them at the office, so we've been <laughs> just remembering yeah. Is- Isabel like talking about how cute they were. So it just <laughs> I mean, when something it looks normal except shrunk. It's like mm-hmm. always going to be the cutest thing. It doesn't matter what it is. So, because yep. yeah, they look like skeins of yarn, you know, with the ball band and everything, but they're just little, <laughs> little, <laughs> little mini, mini, yeah. <laughs> so mini candy bars. I believe we use it in our. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, we even got a uh, brand new pattern that also went up yesterday by mm-hmm. my one of my favorites, Emily Emily Kintai, who lives. Uh, locally, actually. Um, so if you've been to any of our uh, Knit in Public days, which we are having another one this year, uh, you've probably met her there. But it is super cute. She got it in just in time yesterday. And it is a solar system and rockets, which are the rockets are the cutest thing, I think. This is one uh, of those patterns where one of our team members had it up on her computer and was like, oh, my God, it's so cute. And, like, the whole office, like, ran over behind her to go look at her screen <laughs> yep. and, and ooh and awe over how cute it was. <laughs> yeah. So it's so great. It's the Space Mobile and Garland set. So it is 
all of the planets plus some really cu- sorry the rockets are just really cute i just can't help <laughs> but rockets. loving they're very cute <laughs> who knew that rockets could be so cute <laughs> but this takes the rainbow pack um this pattern takes all the colors in the rainbow pack and we have two other packs that came out one is flora and fauna and one is oceanscapes so i cannot wait to see what other people do with them because they are so cute so mm-hmm. And we also brought out some new colors. We have some new colors in Capra and Capretta. Finally, we haven't mm-hmm. done a re- we haven't put some new colors out for a while, so this yeah. was pretty fun. I think we have some new bright colors, right? That are yeah, I love spice. It's a nice like bold dark orange. <laughs> love it, we can. Love it. I I I really really want people to get on the orange kick because we've been talking. I don't know. I've been really attracted to like oranges and yellows, which I never have been. But oh, I, I really love. Them. Yeah, you were like ahead that, of the curve. Um, iconic, which is like an aqua and the spice, would go so good together. Oh man, a knit sweater. <laughs> those, those two. Together. You have another one, another sweater that you are going to knit. <laughs> Just add into the list every yeah. time we look at new yarn. Every time we do a new collection, just add to the list. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly. But yeah, no, I love that iconic color. Which, which, mm-hmm. if, in case you're wondering about the name, we named it after uh, Tiffany's. So that's why it's called iconic because it's the same. <laughs> it's the color of the Tiffany's box. So yeah. fun, fa- fun inside baseball where we come up with names <laughs> because sometimes. We get a little wild on the naming, so. (laughs) (laughs) Wild. (laughs) Oh, wait. Oh, just wait until our next Felici (laughs) release, people. (laughs) (laughs) And our mystery future release that I can't wait to talk about in a few months. (laughs) I I know. (laughs) But but hold it together, Lee. We got a few months. (laughs) 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 So we also have, like, a bunch of other new stuff. I think we've, like, covered, like, a you know, a great amount of it, but I know we have so much that we just keep bringing out. So um, if you want to see all of these things, we have, um, you go to our webpage, we actually on the the top banner, you'll see new and you can see all of our new stuff at once instead of like clicking around all over the, all over the um, website. So it was a fun little thing we put together. So mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we're wrapping up here, but we are not going away because we are bringing in Regan. Um, You've heard us mention him on the podcast many, many times. (laughs) He's all over the social media. He's all over our website because he's a model too. So we're going to talk to him about his speedy sweaters and dyeing and all that good stuff. So stay tuned. The Bear Yarn Sale is happening now. All of our Bear Yarns are 20 to 30% off, and we've got dye on sale too. Add to your stash to have plenty of yarn to dye all spring and summer. The sale ends April 11th, so shop now and then head to our learning center to find different dye techniques to try. Woohoo! And we're back. Uh, Lee and I are back. We are here talking to our good friend, Regan. Uh, You may recognize Regan. He's been around for quite a while, about four years now. He's been on the podcast. He's on our social media channels. But we want him back on the podcast because we've got some things we got to talk to him about. So, hi, Regan. (laughs) Hello. I think we may have mentioned you like multiple episodes in a row um, yeah. when talking about sweater speed, <laughs> sweater, sweater knitting speed, because um, we use you as like a comparison of like none of us are as fast as you are. So we basically wanted to pick your brain about how you do it. And, <laughs> yes. You know, other how can we be faster <laughs> at actually finishing a project? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, it is uh, around the end of March. I'm curious, how many sweaters have you completed since the beginning of this year? Um, I have, so... <laughs> We're coming in with the tough <laughs> questions already, yeah, Regan. I, just, I, want, I have to know. <laughs> um, I have done uh, two crochet sweaters in this calculation. So I've done four sweaters in total so far this wow. year. Wow. Um, and I'm about awesome. halfway done with a fifth one right now. That is impressive. Uh, yeah, and they're all beautiful, of course. Um, 
Okay, so we should take a step back and have you talk a bit about your knitting background, like when you learned to knit, because it might be surprising for a lot of people, I think. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, okay. for sure. Uh, where do I start with this? Um, I actually started... <laughs> uh, so for you. Sorry, I was born, and then I grew up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so as, as Stacey said, I started with the company uh, four years ago. Um, I started off as one of the photographers, though, um, working mainly with the crochet department. Um, and so it's kind of interesting. I had always wanted to learn how to knit. Um, I actually learned how to loom knit back in like 2012, 2013. Um, so I kind of already had that um, desire, <laughs> I think, when I started working for the company. Um, and then, of course, when you're surrounded by a bunch of people who know how to knit and are also willing to teach you, um, it just kind of, <laughs> it's kind of natural, I think. Uh, so I think I started learning how to knit maybe like a half a year after I started working here, even though I wasn't working for KP specifically, um, I, I had you, started then. Did you learn to crochet first? You crocheted first, right? Well, or no, did you knit? It was kind of a back and forth. I did technically learn how to knit first. Um, oh, and okay. then I picked up, yeah, I picked up crochet shortly after that um, and then kind of learned both at the same time. <laughs> I you kind know, of did the same thing in college. I, I, I also I had a roommate who did both and kind of taught me both. And crochet was a little bit easier to pick up the basics of, so I kind of did crochet mostly for like a year, and then I like kind of went back to knitting and then focused on that. I think that's a semi common thing for some, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I think I, that's cool. I learned to knit first, and then I tried to crochet and was super confused. So I hmm. didn't crochet for many, many years. So until I finally it finally something clicked and i'm like oh there aren't really any rules in crochet <laughs> it's pretty much my <laughs> yeah was pretty which, much is my, why, <laughs> which is why it was easier to learn for for my brain is because of the kind of lack of rules and uh yeah it was it was a little bit easier to wrap my head around the basics of it at first i think <laughs> i would probably also agree with that um i think i started off knitting you know like scarves and whatnot Mm -hmm. And then because I was working with the crochet department, uh, I think just being around them, I was more determined to learn crochet more. And I think mm -hmm. I made like my first major project, which was a bag, um, <laughs> was was crocheted. So, uh, yeah. So it was about the same time. I think yeah. I just remember your first crochet project is what I was thinking that. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. that was it. So, but I do. And now that you said your scarf, I kind of remember your scarf, too. You you you've shown it before. I remember that. Oh well, uh, maybe what? maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe not. Maybe I'm just imagining your scarf. So, <laughs> well, I just think of the like the first scarf. I I, I say that with quotes. Uh, was just like the 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 standard first project, which is you add stitches, you remove stitches, and somehow it just becomes like a tapeworm at the end. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. My first scarf was like, I don't know. I just, I didn't really know how to, like, I didn't realize I was adding stitches. And then I also didn't know how to bind off. So I was just knitting and then it turned into like a trapezoid type thing. It was, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, you just brought back a memory. I think I didn't know how to bind off either. My first project. <laughs> and I think what I did is I, I kind of how you would close a hat. I just like brought the yarn through all the live stitches so they wouldn't unravel. And I was like, there, it's done. It won't unravel now. <laughs> oh, that's one way, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like technically worked. <laughs> so you, yeah. So you learned to knit on, on the job here at uh, knit pick slash crochet. Um, and you started as a photographer, and then yes. how long ago did you switch over to the official um, nitpicks department as a graphic designer? Yeah, so um, I'll say it for the third time that today is that I've been working for four years. And so oddly enough, <laughs> I think I'm just coming up about two years as the designer here at KP, which is just about the same amount of time I was a photographer. So kind of like a 50-50 <laughs> amount yeah. of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you do some photography stuff too. I know uh, some of us like rope you into like, oh hey, we need this shoot 
real fast. You know, as a book designer, sometimes I'll need a, a flat shot of something and just like pull you into the studio and take a shot real quick. So yeah, it's pretty yeah. nice having that e- expertise in the office as well as like an extra. So you, you kind of do all things creative I'm, around. I'm a, I'm a secret agent, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but mainly all the uh, emails and web graphics. So. Yes, like, which I do most of the photography for, for those. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, we can't. He, we can't let you go from the photography department. Uh, I too. can't let it go. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that I. I can always ask you like random questions if I need to like Photoshop something and like, you know, lighten mm-hmm. something and like, oh, Regan knows. I'll just yes. ping him. <laughs> or why won't my Photoshop work like I did last week when I'm like, why isn't this working, Regan? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm, of course, happy to help. <laughs> yes, yes, you're you're one of the nicest people. Oh. Anyway, so when did you start knitting? So let's go into sweaters. When did you start knitting sweaters? Oh, uh, there's a fun story here. Uh, <laughs> oh, we like um, fun stories. Yeah, so uh, right around when Twill got introduced, which I think was uh. <laughs> like the end of 2020 ish. When when was that, Stacy? Do you remember? I want to say 2019. more 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. pre-pandemic so. yeah i do remember oh that's right pre-pandemic um i do remember that everyone in the office was super excited when i came in um and i was also super excited about it even though i knew nothing about yarn <laughs> at that time <laughs> um and so actually i was uh overzealous as as i usually am and i actually attempted to make a sweater with twill back in 2019 and I had no idea what I was doing. And I think I cast on, and you know, Twill is this, you know, worsted, highly dense thing. And I cast on with, I think, a pair of like 3.25, 3.5 millimeter oh, needles. Oh my goodness. Wow. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think I just went, you know, I, it was a nip pearl the entire time. So you just meant, you know, imagine this super dense, super like whatever that's like a bolt that's like a bulletproof sweater yeah yeah um i of course did not finish that because by the time i got to the sleeves i was like this isn't this isn't right whatsoever (laughs) um and i actually i i had that for like a year i think until i actually knew how to make a sweater and i ripped it all out i got the yarn back to life i suppose (laughs) and i Mm -hmm. ended up re-knitting a sweater um back in like 2021 i think or something like that but anyway, nice. so let's 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 go past that first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so it's kind of funny that uh, one of the first, well, actually, the first sweater I I ever finished was actually crocheted. Um, so, and that's probably one of the bigger projects that I've done with crochets is a sweater, and then my second sweater was also crocheted. Um, and I think uh, for me, it was figuring out the technicality of a sweater and the construction of it, and I think mm-hmm. that was kind of the barrier of kind of being scared to try and knit a sweater because I didn't fully understand how to make a sweater. And for some reason, (laughs) crocheting a sweater seemed easier and I was able, I was able to do that and I understood the construction better after that. And so after I did my first few crochet sweaters, I then knit a sweater. um, And then I haven't really looked back since then. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And you, you do beautiful work. So is Twill still your favorite yarn or do you have another favorite yarn? Uh, no, I still very much enjoy Twill. Um, yeah, I do too. Yeah. The, the last few sweaters I've done are, are in Twill. So, (laughs) (laughs) but not on like 3.25 millimeter needles. No, No, I, I've learned, I've learned uh, beyond that. (laughs) And I know the last one that you made was until that you hand dyed yourself. Yes. And it is a beautifully complex green with like bright spots. It like kind of a very uh, multi shaded green. Can you talk about the dye process of that? I'm yeah. curious how you got that. Um, I have always liked dyeing yarn. Um, one of the last few times I was on the podcast, I was talking about natural dyeing. Um, Mm-hmm. So that was, you know, using natural things, but, uh, we, we should say real quick, if you want to check that out, listener, uh, episode 321, I believe it is from, uh, 2020 and it's a, an episode all about dying and Regan's on that. So if you want to learn more, check that out. Just, just be careful that I, I was less knowledgeable back then. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but so the combination of that and then our coworker Elena did a whole series about acidine, um, which of course uh, I think intrigued me even more. So I don't quite remember why I felt the need to dye yarn, but um, I, <laughs> I was, you just need to. Yeah, sometimes you just need to <laughs> with, with any kind um, of craft. Just gotta. <laughs> I think yeah. it was like I love the colors of the build, but I wanted to make something that was more my color. I think, mm-hmm. which is the beauty of <laughs> of hand dyeing, right? Um, yeah. So I I got my my twill and I got colors of jacquard acid dyes that I thought would let me make the colors I want. Um, and I had this idea that I wanted to. I actually wanted it to be kind of like a reddish color with maybe like hints of green in it. Um, but then as I was doing, I, I <laughs> bought some 10, uh, like the mini hanks as well to like do color tests before I got into everything. And I created like this really nice foresty green. And I was like, oh, what if I just make <laughs> everything this color instead of trying to mix, you know, red and green together? Um, and so, yeah, the dye process, um, I kind of... I wanted to learn more about ways to achieve certain dye effects. So I think, I think the person is Chemnitz. Um, if that oh, sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. Yep. I um, know she is. Yeah. She had some videos about like tonal dyeing um, mm-hmm. and how to kind of achieve that. And a big thing is like not stirring the pot. Once you put the dye in, just kind of letting <laughs> the colors attach where they're going to attach. Um, and that kind of gives a more variated um, color uh, separation type mm-hmm. of thing mm-hmm. yeah um so yeah i i did that with i i i created like a base color which was an emerald green plus kind of like a gold yellow to create more of a warm mm-hmm. mossy green yeah. and then um over dyeing it with like a brown chestnut um second dye that i only threw in like a certain part of the yarn so that it only attached to certain parts and it kind of created this nice really re- just beautiful mossy I, I did describe it as I described it as rotten avocado at one point. But I know that's not very uh, appealing. Um, I, I love it. That will not yeah. be a co- that will no. not be a color name found that on will not be a color. Um, But a friend of mine described it as like a beetle, like a beetle shell. Or, oh, okay. You know, or just moss. Moss is a great description of it. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and it, you know, it came out exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, I love I love how it came out. Yeah. It's so it's, awesome that you're able to get a whole sweater quantity too that all kind of matches. I feel oh like if I God. tried the technique you just described, like every skein would be different from each yeah, other. Yeah. Yeah. Um I I did so I, I've got two pots that I have for dyeing, you know, specifically, right? Because you're not supposed to you're not supposed to use stuff that's um cooking. Um yeah. so I was able to dye two hanks of yarn at a time. Um and I was very I like I I wrote down exactly what I did for each one. So of course each one is going to be slightly different, but they were consistent enough where one side knitted up, it looked it looked like it was on purpose. So awesome. Yeah. Did you alternate the skeins at all, or did you just knit um, each skein at once? I just knit each skein at once. Yeah, yeah, I was just curious wow. because I know that's what we suggest for like a lot of our tonal colors when we're knitting like sweaters like in Hawthorne or whatever, that they would be, you would alternate skeins just to kind of, um, you know, keep it where it doesn't look like completely opposite skeins. But you did the perfect job of your dyeing, so. I, I wouldn't say perfect, mm-hmm. but but close enough, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have like, uh, not necessarily favorite, but just like a specific sweater project to like talk about um, in detail, like whether like something went wrong and you had to troubleshoot it and so it's like memorable or like you improvised it and it turned out like different than how you imagined it would or something like that. I mean, I can talk about the sweaters I made for my brothers. That was a whole <laughs> yeah. lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, remember. Yeah. Yes. Um, it was last year of January. Um, well, not Jan- last year of March. Um, once again, you never just get ideas where you're like, I'm not sure why I'm doing this, but I'm doing it. <laughs> no one asked me to do this, but, but I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got into my head that I was going to make four sweaters, uh, two sweaters for my brothers, and then two sweaters for their partners. Um, 
and I was going to give myself a two week deadline for each sweater. Whoa. <laughs> and, and, oh, Regan. Yeah. Oh, um, my goodness. <laughs> and I basically just, and there were these, uh, I worked with What a Tweed, and there I, I planned out these um, kind of cable cable sweaters where the two sweaters for each couple were like matching sweaters. Um, and of course, in colors that we kind of represent ourselves with. So there was blue, green, yellow, and purple. And then <laughs> I, I, I'm represented by the color of red. So, um, but uh, I basically just knit 24 <laughs> seven for two months um, <laughs> with, I think the longest I took was 14 days on the first sweater, which I think was mainly just because it was the first one. And I think once I got past that, the others were, uh, you know, flew by quite quickly after that. Um, and then wow. the shortest one was nine days. Um, also it was the smallest one. So kind of, kind of <laughs> makes sense, <laughs> but, uh, I did that. Um, I sent them off. I had my, my neighbors model them because my brothers do not live in state. So I wanted to photograph them before they, they got them. Um, and yeah, that was just an immense amount of time on sweaters where I like, <laughs> I needed to take a break after that, um, for wow. sweaters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you uh, have any tips for like, uh, hand aches or things that happen when you knit like so much, like, uh, just even your, like, do you, I'm curious, do you like watch a certain kind of thing that helps you knit faster or like listen to like podcasts or audiobooks or like just to help you go faster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I just want to say one thing is I don't know if I necessarily knit faster. I just knit a lot, if that makes <laughs> sense, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, when I Like when I say that I knit 24-7, like I'm talking, I was knitting 10 hours in a single day, you know? <laughs> wow. Oh, goodness. Regan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I worry uh, about your, your wrists and fingers and yeah, health. <laughs> I, I don't really experience a lot of pain knitting. Oh. Um, That's good. but you know, every so often I'll take a break and stretch them and crack my knuckles. Um, cause they do <laughs> get a little stiff after a while. Um, but for me personally, like my, my tradition is to go to the coffee shop in the morning on the weekends. And I think just like being out at a coffee shop, just kind of, I'm able to focus on what I'm doing, but I'm like not watching anything. I'm just sitting there. So I'm not sure why that would help me be more <laughs> focused on, on what I'm doing, but I can be there for a couple hours and and just be knitting that. Um, other than that, I just kind of throw on TV. I don't even watch TV. I just kind of, it's just background noise. Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> that, not, not really tips there. It's just... <laughs> Uh, I just I'm, just like yeah. very focused on the knitting. See, for yeah. me, it's it's often like whatever I'm watching is like the number one brain priority, and then the knitting is kind of the number two. But it sounds like for you, it's like knitting is always number one. Yeah, whatever else is secondary. Unless it's something. I mean, of course, obviously, if it's like a basic stockinette sweater where you can just um, sit there and knit, I might watch a movie at that point. But like the mm -hmm. cables, I needed to be paying attention to what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I get that. Do you get a lot of attention when you're knitting at a coffee shop for like four hours at a time? Uh, <laughs> like, yes and no. Sometimes I'll have multiple people come up to me and sometimes people don't say a single thing. So I guess <laughs> it kind of depends on the people that are there. Um, I've had people who who knit themselves or people who crochet or people who are just interested in what I'm doing. Um, I, I was in there the other day and some old lady came up to me and said that the yarn I was working with was uh, was yummy. She described it as, <laughs> um, but I'm I'm kind of because I go there so often. People kind of know me now, so mm -hmm. I'll have people say like, "Oh, I see you in here all the time. What are you working on?" You know, um, which is <laughs> and which you is have to, fun. I I assume you go in to show off your sweaters when you're done. Then oh yeah, yeah. No, no one actually cares about that. They, they don't remember what I'm actually working on. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so the, the green sweater that I hand-dyed, um, I did that back in January where I took some time off. Um, and I was, I was determined that I was going to dye yarn and knit a sweater before coming back to work. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> um, but uh, that sweater I did in nine days. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, and I think part of what, you know, the combination of going to the coffee shop for three hours and then coming home and just knitting the entire day watching TV. Um, I did go see a movie at one point and I, I knit while I was you know, watching that in the theater. And then <laughs> something I wanted to try out was um, 
walking and knitting because one, I, yeah. walk, I want to walk more. Uh, so I thought I could also learn how to knit and walk and also get stuff done at that point as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think the sleeves I knit completely while walking. Uh, nice. And that's that's like time that I wouldn't have been knitting. So mm -hmm. yeah. it seemed to go by pretty fast too. I'm not like, because I'm walking around, maybe I'm just distracted. So it's easy to just kind of get worked up and caught up in that. Yeah, nice. I like to walk and knit too. I'm not like super long walks and I can't definitely can't knit like sleeves. I have to knit socks. Yeah. I do that a lot when we used to do um, a lot of events. And people would be fascinated the fact that I was just standing there knitting or walking around knitting. And it's just like, I just need something to do with my hands. I get too nervous. So, Yeah, I've, I've done that a lot with, with also socks or hats, like things that don't weigh down. Like, and, <laughs> and it's got to be like plain stock in it, really. But um, I haven't done that in a while. I, sh I should do that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, like think, I think I was looking up, you know, strategies to, to how to do it. And I think the one thing they said was, you, you know, knit socks or hats, but don't work on that worsted sweater that, that, yeah. that you're doing. And that was the exact <laughs> you're like, thing. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I like I'm like suddenly like worried about you, Regan. <laughs> Were you when you were walking? I'm like, are you walking? Because I know because we all live in Portland, which is a metropolitan. Were you walking like on the streets of Portland? I was walking doing... in, in the neighborhood. Um, okay. Yeah, definitely not on just like major busy streets or anything. I was like, <laughs> I'm just like imagining you walking on like a busy street and like oh no he's gonna get hit by a car no <laughs> no i do my best to avoid traffic and other people as much as possible <laughs> yeah fair that's fair <laughs> you know what we forgot to mention to the listener <gasps> oh. is if if you if you want to see the face of who you're listening to right now um Regan also did some modeling for us for one of our favorite collections, Thicket, our cable collection from uh, last year, 2021 cable collection, cover model, and a bunch of like random free patterns and solo patterns too. So he's he shows up on the website a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thicket. So we just want to thank you for that. We always we always love to have you as a model. Of course, <laughs> as a of pattern course. <laughs> yeah, Thicket was my favorite, <laughs> still my favorite collection to date, and it was also one of my favorite photo shoots. Well, it was one of the first photo shoots I'd actually been on. So having Regan there, someone I knew, it was great. <laughs> it was fun. It was, it was cold. It was so so cold. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we Regan is always great um, to grab to model a new project that we forgot to get shot at a photo shoot, or we just happen to have mm -hmm. in the in the studio or in the office. So, mm -hmm. and he's right there. He's always there. So. I'm always there. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Regan. Of course, you're welcome. <laughs> if people want to find you outside of KP, where should they look? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, you know, take photos of all my all my uh, knitwear and whatnot, um, and I post it at my Instagram at Fiber Regan. Um, I'm sure that will be in the notes. So, yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Regan's being very modest. He takes really beautiful, oh. beautiful photos. So, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you for having me on here. This is a uh, it's 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 nice to be back. <laughs> yeah, anytime. I always love to have someone else besides just me and Stacey, to, um, <laughs> but just so people can like get to know the office better. And yeah, it's For great. Sure. Love it. Oh, I just realized I remembered something. One of my first experiences with Regan was the bird that was stuck in the photo department downstairs. <laughs> 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 And because he was, I didn't know you that well at that time, and you were posting it on. That's when I started following you on Instagram because you were posting a story about the bird that was in the in oh. the photo studio downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, for people who might not know this, uh, during during the pandemic, uh, everyone was working from home, but the photographers still worked in the office because we had to take photos, and there was a bird that was just hanging out. Um, and I tried my best to get it out of the office as best as I could. And I opened up the front doors and it just kept flying back and forth. And it's like, bird, just go a little bit lower and you're free to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was kind of stressful, but it, it did end up flying away eventually. So, <laughs> Sorry, I just, I just remembered that. That was just really funny. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. all right. Well, thanks for joining us, Regan. Of course. Thank, Thank you, you again. again. Bye. Bye. This podcast was originally created by Kelly Petkin. It is produced and hosted by me, Stacey Winkleplek, and Lee Meredith. 
Produced by Andy Satterlund with additional production and editing by Chase Ryan. Special thanks to Regan Nishikawa for joining us today. We recorded this episode in the Pacific Northwest where we're envious of Regan's efficiency. From everyone here at Nitpicks, thank you for joining us. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the individual participants. They do not necessarily reflect the opinions or views of Crafts Group LLC or Premier Needle Arts. All the yarn, tools, and patterns mentioned in this episode, along with all the inspiration a knitter could need, can be found on our website at nitpicks.com. If you'd like to be on our podcast, leave us a voicemail. We'll be checking it regularly and using your calls in later episodes. To leave a voicemail, call 360-334-4847 and record your message. You can also record a voice memo on your phone and email us that audio file at podcast at nitpicks.com. Like and follow us on your favorite social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube at Nitpix. Rate and review us wherever you listen to this podcast. Until next time, happy crafting! It is produced and hosted by me, Lee Merritt. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so tired, I'm just reading what's on the screen. Hi, I'm Lee now. (laughs) Produced by Addie. God. Addie. Addie. I am an American Girl doll. (laughs) Oh, my goodness.